coming off a pretty exciting morning um, and we're ready to get started. So today, I'm John Gilpatrick, um, the GM for Bixby Home in North America, as well as a run-in innovation group. Uh, Kevin Kwan, want to say hello? Hey, everyone. Okay. Kevin Kwan is a uh, product director for Bixby Home here in North America. We're representing a pretty big team for both here in North America as well as in Korea, and we have some of our counterpoints from Korea that are here. So uh, Yoon is leading design, AJ Young, is Young here? Okay, product manager as well. So it's a diverse team from both Seoul and to here as well, and so thank you. So today the session is gonna cover three different topics. One, I'm gonna give you a quick, quick brief history of Bixby Home, what, we've, what the prospect is of Bix, uh, Bixby Home, the history of it and where we're going. Second, Kevin is gonna give you an overview of the SDK and actually how to create a card. Uh, and join in. And then third, we're gonna invite some guests on the stage, some very important partners of ours to come in and uh, have a little discussion about Bixby Home and what it means to their respective companies. So thanks, let's get started. So first, uh, Bixby. It's been thrown around a lot <laughs> within the conversation today and I just wanna make sure we understand what this session is. So Bixby is an umbrella term inside of Samsung for all of our intelligent services. So for today, it's really about Bixby Home. And how you access Bixby Home is you go to the home screen, swipe over to the right. Very easy access. It's on all of our flagship devices since we launched in April of 2017. And the promise of it is to be a mobile, a, an aggregation of all the things that you do on your phone. If it's from your favorite apps, from the apps that you use on your phone, like calendar and caller or the alarm, and putting that into one seamless uh, collection uh, that's customized for you. Right, so the version that I see of Bixby Home is different than the version that Kevin sees for Bixby Home. Our product sensibilities. Been trying to define and moving towards a, uh, some core values. One is we really wanna make easy access and increase uh, engagement to our partner apps. So another discovery point for our partners. One, as I said earlier, it learns and adapts. So there's an intelligence framework that it's built upon that really understands the context of what you're doing and moving towards even more so of a more personalized experience. Uh, we couldn't get there for Bixby Home since its launch until today without the help of our content partners. Uh, here are just a collection of some of them. Uh, we're gonna be talking to a few others in just a moment, uh, but it's really the harnessing the power of what they do best and trying to leverage it into this single screen experience. All right, wanted to highlight a few key strategic partners. They're all important, but just highlighting a few of these right now, just to show you the kind of strategic value that we think Bixby Home provides for Samsung. So for one, during the conference, we've seen a lot about Fortnite. So if you go to Bixby Home, uh, when we launched the Note 9, it was one of our uh, discovery points where you could go and access and download Fortnite, right? Spotify, it's a part of a global partnership that we announced during the uh, unpacked event for Note 9. And as Spotify is going to integrate itself into a lot of different um, devices across the Samsung ecosystem, we see Bixby Home as one of their primary ways you can access, discover, and play Spotify. So thanks for being here. And Oath, Oath, uh, great partner, incredible collection of digital brands. I think the name just changed, if I'm right. I don't know if I have, is it Verizon? Verizon Media Group, all right, so that's a new one. Uh, and so for Verizon Media Group, um, uh, incredible expertise in content, how you discover content, how you use content, and bringing that expertise to bear within Oath and leveraging some of their brands. All right, a few engagement statistics that I just wanted to share. Um, for partners that are interested, I'm happy to go deeper uh, after we <laughs> sign some NDAs and we can really get into it <laughs> to, to give you a better understanding, but Bixby Home, since its launch, we have global reach. We have lots of scale, and also a very easy access point for customers to be able to discover it. So one interesting statistic that we've been tracking, this is a snapshot of August. Um, and so in August, 55% of the people went to Bixby Home 20 days in that month. So we're seeing re-engagement factors. Uh, another one is, we also think Bixby is not only a great personalized experience, but also the top of the funnel to be able to, for discovery. Um, and so 7.8 million clicks went into the Galaxy App Store, right? Which is great. 
music streams. In August, we saw 2.3 million streams. Uh, we think Bixby Home is an incredible place to be able to access it, swipe over, hit the song, and it's referencing the APIs from the different services, and off you go, right? And the number of click-throughs from Bixby Home to all our partners in August was 221 million, right? So we're seeing some volume there. Next, so what's next? Um, we've seen a lot of this today. So Bixby Home is one of the places where the One UI is going to be showcased. It's great. We know Bixby Home, a lot of the promise of Bixby Home is the utilities you do on your phone in combination with great content. And this new design has an emphasis and focus on content. Um, also, the usability issues of making sure that the content and where you're interacting is in the right place, down at the bottom of the phone with the viewing area up at the top. Bixby Home is going to be leveraging all of that. Quick video. Scroll goes quickly. We have a lot of content. <laughs> so that's a new design system. Really excited about it. We're really excited to be a part of the new One UI that the team in HQ has been working on and applying it to Bixby Home, and we think it showcases what Bixby Home and the promise of it really has. Um, so some two things specifically I wanted to call out, just from a product sensibility, is one is we're really going to focus on personalization. So as the partners in the audience here, as you're thinking about different use cases or integrating into Bixby Home, please keep that top of mind. Secondly, um, for Bixby Home, it's a new experience. We know consumers love apps, right? And this is a, new, this is a step uh, towards a different idea of creating a single screen experience. And so as a part of that, we really want to try and help demonstrate habituated patterns and orient the product around these habituated patterns. So in the morning, I understand what's there, in the evening, during my commute, when I'm traveling, and to really create context and habituated patterns is something that we're gonna really focus on for 2019. Quick overview of the new design. So if people that are familiar with the current version of Bixby Home, it's one long stream with a collection of different cards. And the collection that I see is the one, it's different than the one that Kevin sees. What we're gonna do moving forward as a part of the new release, and that's just coming out for beta, and then in uh, January uh, will be released more broadly, we're gonna divide Bixby Home into three distinct sections. The first section over to your left is what we're calling internally right now uh, quick actions. And so these quick actions are really gonna be based on the context and patterns. So in the morning, when I wanna go there, uh, see the traffic report, what's the weather, listen to my favorite podcast, right? And then off you go. In the evening, I wanna reorder some of uh, my favorite dish from Grubhub. Uh, if I wanna uh, <laughs> watch a little news or, and then set my alarm for uh, the next day, right? So we're trying to define and create patterns that make sense based on how users use their device. So the quick actions. The next in the middle is sort of our lean back experience. This is where we want a lot of the more uh, passive lean back content experiences. So our news, our videos, Giphy, all of those uh, different elements all into one section. And lastly is an area that we're calling nudges. And so nudges will provide the opportunity for us to be able to explain to the consumers what Bixby Home has to offer and what new services are actually available. So this is an overview of the new system. First time anyone's seeing this. Glad you guys are here to uh, be able to take part in this. Uh, please, since this is in sort of the spirit of a developer conference, we want your feedback um, and um, certainly open to it. But thank you, that's the new design. So I'm gonna pass it to Kevin. Thanks. Thank you, John. Yeah. Hey, everyone. So today, uh, I'm gonna to spend a couple of minutes just explaining at a high level how you would create a card. Uh, if anyone has any questions or want to go into more detail, uh, please feel free to see me after the session, or we have a booth outside uh, where you can speak to more of the team. So over these next couple of slides, the most important thing to take away is this URL. 
developer.samsung.com slash Bixby Home. This will take you to our partner portal, which is where you'll be able to download our SDK, review any documentation, uh, and also when your card is ready to be published, this is where you'll submit it so that we can review it. So there are five straightforward steps in order to create a card. First, because our SDK is not public yet, you'll have to speak to someone on the Bixby Home team so that we get an understanding of what you want to do. Next, you'll go to the partner portal that I just mentioned uh, and provide some details about your card's use case. After that, you can start developing your card, and we have two approaches to do that, uh, which I'll talk more about a little bit later. Uh, step four, once development is all done, you'll test it and submit it through the partner portal for review. And finally, if everything is good, uh, we'll deploy your card to Bixby Home users. So our SDK uses a template system in order to uh, determine what a card will look like. Currently, we have 42 different templates, uh, a selection of which are shown here. Uh, and these templates are ones that we've created for existing Samsung apps, as well as uh, for our partners that are part of Bixby Home today. When we uh, went through the process to create these templates, uh, we analyzed uh, the common use cases across a variety of verticals uh, with the focus to really drive users back into the partner properties. So for example, if you look at the news template in the bottom row, there's space to show a couple of headlines, three specific headlines, uh, but if the user really wants to read the article, they'll have to click in to your app to, you know, to read the whole thing. Similarly, we have a sports template on the top row uh, where you can see the live score or, or, re, uh, or the final score in the game. But if you really want to know what happened, like who scored the goals, what are the box scores, that sort of stuff, you'll have to click the call to action button and uh, find out the details. Now, to populate the, the content on your card, there are two approaches. So the first approach is to have your app on the user's device share data to Bixby Home. This is the fastest way to personalize your card, uh, which is something we recommend because we see personalization as one of the leading factors to increase engagement back into your app. The other approach is to have your server push content to our server whenever you want the card to change. Um, so you can do this at any time, and the next time the user swipes onto Bixby Home, they'll see your updated card content. So let's uh, go into a little bit more detail about the tasks you need to do. So if you choose to uh, uh, push data, uh, to share data from your app, you'll have to release a new version of your app that includes a small library from Bixby Home. Uh, you also need to add either a broadcast receiver or content provider and Bixby Home will call that when we need to update the card. At the same time, you'll go through our partner portal and, uh, go, th and go through the process of submitting the card details and that sort of stuff. Uh, we'll review it, and if everything is okay, uh, we'll add the card definition into Bixby Home. Once the user has both the new card definition and your updated app, they'll start seeing uh, your new Bixby card as part of their feed. If you don't want to update your app, then another approach is to add some functionality to your server uh, and to push a JSON file to our data server. You'll still need to go through the process through the partner portal to uh, describe your card. Uh, but once the new card definition is on Bixby Home on our user's device, then they'll start seeing your card immediately. So we have a couple of other things that are in the works, which we can hopefully uh, release in the next few months. First is an analytics dashboard. And uh, the reason we're trying to do that is to help you guys understand the performance of your cards. Uh, we want to nurture an environment where our partners can continu continually experiment and just optimize their co card content. And having the feedback loop of, the, of this dashboard is the first step towards this goal. We're also adding new templates. So if you have an interesting use case that doesn't fit neatly into one of the, the templates you previously saw, then feel free to reach out to us and we'll see what we can do about that. Uh, and finally, as John mentioned, personalization is uh, a very strong uh, area that we want to see our, our partners do. 
And so we want to make it as easy as possible for you guys to personalize your cards, especially when it comes to using your existing server APIs. So these are just a couple of things we're working on. Uh, if you have any more points of feedback or you want to start the card creation process, uh, feel free to speak to John or myself after this session uh, at the remainder of the conference, or if you don't have time, uh, feel free to reach us uh, via email. Thanks, and I'm going to pass it back to John. Cool. Thanks, Kat. <laughs> One more click. All right, great. Uh, at this time, I'd like to invite up onto the stage our... Our speakers today, Michael and Sheree and Chris, please join us. Give them a round of applause. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. That's fantastic. I feel like a game show host up there. It's great. <laughs> uh, so thank you for joining us. Uh, and I think this is a really interesting uh, collection of speakers that we have as it relates to Bixby Home, and it's ver for very specific reasons, right? And so Sheree is an Android engineer leader within Spotify, and so hopefully we can dig into some of the more technical aspects of the Bixby Home integration and what it means for, Spot for you. Chris, CEO, founder of FRVR, game startup, recently here from London. Quick stay, thank you for joining us. Mm -hmm. Hopefully not too jet lagged. Michael is product executive at Oath, formerly known as Oath, Verizon Media Group. I, I'll get there. I'll get there. Uh, so thank you guys for coming. Uh, we really appreciate it. Um, Sheree, let's start with you. All right. So how about some easy ones? Uh, I thought one is, what's your favorite playlist? I'm Rap Caviar, and uh, also, can you just? Explain to everyone in the group here, uh, what are some of the technical integrations that you're currently leading for Spotify? Sure, I'll start with that. Um, okay. So I work, as you said, on the technical side of things um, in our software mobile integrations team. Yeah. Um, and more recently, I've been working on a lot of the Samsung integrations, including our Bixby Home in integration and Samsung Music. Um, more recently as well, uh, I've worked on some of our Facebook integrations, including our Instagram um, stories okay. integration. And my favorite playlist is probably my own playlist that I make for myself. But tell, tell everyone. Yeah. <laughs> um, you can find it if you search my name on Spotify. Okay. Um, but uh, probably my favorite, favorite curated playlist is Chill Tracks, which um, is like experimental electronic music. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Great. And it, let me just do a quick follow-up. Um, I think it would be helpful also if you could just tell, you know, the group here a little bit about how the Spotify card works in Bixby Home. Sure. Uh, and, you know, Spotify is a global company with such massive reach. Um, and how do you think a service like Bixby Home really helps drive engagement? And I know uh, growth isn't your only factor. It's an important one, but also... Uh, lifetime value of the customer, uh, thinking about conversion from trial to subscriptions. But if you could just talk a little bit about maybe Bixby Home, what it means, what the how the card performs, and how it fits into the overall strategy for Spotify. Sure. Yeah. So we actually have three different cards, um, and for us, the strategy there is about both discoverability and engagement. Yep. Um, the first card to mention is our streaming card um, that's offered for existing users of Spotify. And it surfaces personalized recommendations um, and playback controls for the Spotify app. Um, and then the second card we have is for people who don't have uh, Spotify installed yet but uh, would like to know more about it. Um, it's just a value prop card for them. We call that the notice card. Yep. Um, and then we also have uh, our server card. And that is a card also for, for people who don't necessarily have Spotify installed, but um, get to see trending recommendations based on their locale uh, within Bixby Home. Yeah. yeah. It's, I mean, it, when you're touching on the different cards, and it's something that as Bixby Home has been evolving over time, we're starting to think more consciously of like the whole customer journey, right? From discovering to re-engagement. Uh, and so in the backend system, uh, there are several different cards, but sometimes to a consumer, they don't know that's happening, which is good. Uh, but it's just something that's very front and center as we're thinking about the evolution of Bixby Home. 
All right. Chris. Yeah. Um, as a gamer, executive, startup person, you know, you are a game developer by trade. Is that right? Right? And I know you were in your hotel room last night. Yeah, I was uh, working on yeah. Working? <laughs> <laughs> working on developing a game. So thank you for sneaking away from the hotel room to join us. Um, can you just tell everyone a little bit about, a little bit about your company? Absolutely. And, and then maybe part two is that uh, not only does Bixby Home, we think it's a great platform for really massive companies like you know, Oath and Spotify, but we love working with startups as well, yeah. right? I think it's a really fertile ground for experimentation, for growth. Um, can you just share a little bit about how Bixby Home is, con is contributing to your current growth strategy? Oh, absolutely. Right. So, so like, first of all, we only have a, uh, a server card. We actually don't have an application uh, at all. We, are, uh, we build post app store games, as we call them. They're all HTML5. They run in a browser or in a web view. And, and we strongly believe that that type of distribution is going to be defining for how interactive content is going to be distributed in the future. Historically, you had these monopolistic app stores and they're slowly losing their monopoly as the browsers become more competent. And we are embracing that uh, as much as we can by building tools and infrastructure of, that allows us to take our games and then distribute them to not like two channels or five channels, but like hundreds of channels. And of course, working with a, with a company like Samsung is, is, is amazing for us at the stage we are at. We are a small company and we get to, to work with one of the companies in the world that interact with as many possible people that we want, right? You know, it's, it's, it's staggering for us. We have a Bixby card live. It's live in a single territory as a test, and we've seen more than a million users swing by our, our games already. And the, the engagement and, and, and the quality of the users we get from the Samsung Bixby card is just absolutely amazing. Great. Well, thanks for making the trip. Absolutely. Uh, Michael, um, Bixby Home, we know, I, we know this, and this is how we really define it. it. Wouldn't be in the position it is without the support of our partners, right? And we see Oath as really a valuable partner for us. Uh, from Oath's perspective, maybe Verizon Media Group's perspective, how do you see Bixby Home really being strategically important? Not just for where we are now, but you know where we're moving to in the future. Sure. Yeah. Um, just so folks know, Oath is actually uh, the parent company of all of Yahoo, AOL, Huffington Post, TechCrunch, and Gadget. You name it. So we have a lot of content. Um, and so, you know, given the quick access to Bixby Home, it's really important for us to be at the fingertips of our users, right? So showing Yahoo News, showing you stock tickers uh, from Yahoo Finance, sports, et cetera. So uh, it's really a big part of our uh, kind of approach and strategy to get in front of users, having quick access to content and information that they want to have. Um, the second piece, too, is I think as a traditional portal experiences are really moving into an app and device ecosystem. Um, it's important for us to be there as well and be relevant to, you know, uh, giving users access to, to all the information they want. And so giving all of our content that we have, um, I'd like to make sure it's available uh, through Bixby Home. And so it's uh, from a reach perspective, it's obviously important for us strategically. Yeah. I, and I, just as a special thanks to the three of you, right, is because we know that consumers really love apps, and that's sort of the paradigm that we're certainly in. And as we are moving into different kinds of interfaces, be that voice, or a single screen experience. You guys have been very supportive of us, and so we thank you. Um, speaking about new sort of like new experiences, I know your company is making a big bet, Chris, on progressive web apps. Yes. Um, I think just for the group, it would be really helpful to understand how do you see progressive web apps working in conjunction with an experience like Bixby Home? Uh, are we helping with that adoption? Just what's your general view of progressive web apps in the sort of current status of the mobile universe? Yeah, so, so I lied a little bit before when I said we, didn't, we don't have apps. We, we actually distribute to any channel, channel that has a discovery service and we want to. And of course, we are on the app stores because they are, they are big channels. And we, we see the numbers on the app store where, like, say, we send 100 users to app stores. We do well at 20 people download the app. So that's a big drop off going through that install flow and it's inconvenient to the user. And with progressive app, web apps, you get to reverse that relationship. You send the users straight to an experience again. You engage them right then and then. If we send 100 users to, say, one of our web games, 98% of them will engage. And the average time they'll spend is like eight minutes. And then with progressive web apps, you have an opportunity to prompt them to install uh, the experience on the home screen. They don't download an app. It's just the web website basically being installed on the website. And it still gives us push notifications. It gives us home screen icons. And the users who go through that 
uh, PWA install process are equally likely to actually engage with the game as our mobile users are who are our best users, but it's much easier to convince a user to actually go engage with that content when they have already sort of tried the experience already. And so they, they get to decide rather from, from actually trying the experience rather from a bunch of screenshots and a video on an app store. Yeah. What's your favorite game right now? Uh, of ours? Of yours, yeah. Uh, yeah it's a, uh, we have a game called Drag Race. Drag Race, okay. Which I really like. It's a simple type of game. We do hyper-casual games. That's the, the right type of games for this, uh, for this market as of right now. As the market matures and as, as this paradigm shift happens, we are going to see like deep games. But, and we are diving into those. So we have like asynchronous multiplayer games in development, and they are, of course, very engaging. But it's sort of at the end of the day for our company, it doesn't matter what I like. We try to do everything by metric. Okay. Right? You know, so like we fail fast uh, five or six times in our pipeline. Yeah. And everything we try to do is basically what does the user want? Right? We want to live up to the user's experience rather than necessarily build the games for us, which is very businessy, but a, a great way of building a company. Awesome. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, it, it's been exciting to see just the growth of the company that you've had since you launched your card, I think, in July. Yeah. And just to seeing the progression, uh, how quickly that you guys are moving, it's really exciting, right? Yeah. Um, Cherie, uh, let's get a little bit more technical, I think. I'm certainly not technical, so I think for the rest of the group, uh, what are the most frequent technical hurdles that you face when you're integrating Spotify into a third-party service like Bixby Home? Um, and could you give any other advice to the group about how you should think about your overall API strategies when you're going into different services like Bixby Home? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so at Spotify, I've worked both on uh, the APIs that we release to developers, and I've, of course, worked with third parties like Bixby Home integrating uh, their SDKs. Um, and I'd say maybe... maybe and our SDK a, is perfect. Yes, it's fantastic. Right? <laughs> okay. Um, and um, I'd say <laughs> the, maybe it's not like a, a technical hurdle, but I'd say a lot of hiccups usually are a result of like product assumptions. Um, you might have a, a very good idea um, about what is successfully going to work in your product, um, but as you integrate that into a foreign experience, you'll learn that people use your product quite differently. Um, for example, at Spotify, um, on the team that I work on, we integrate uh, Spotify into a lot of third-party apps, and even though we might be um, an expert in how uh, users consume uh, our content on, on platform. Once we enter into, into a foreign experience, for example, um, messaging uh, in like our Facebook Messenger integration, we learn that users use it a little differently or, uh, or either from that integration in our, in, in our app or between other integrations. Um, so yeah, I think like if I were to give any advice about how, how to develop your API, it would be to start really small and simple, deliver like one core value, um, and then always pull for feedback from uh, the consumers of, of your API and get ready for it to change. Yeah, and I think as working on Bixby Home for the last, you know, since its launch, you know, a similar thing that you're going through is really having to be conscious of what the value, core value proposition, proposition is from our partners and how we're integrating them in, into the service. And sort of putting two different hats on as we're going through it, as much as like what you're saying, being conscious of what platforms you're going into, we're trying to do the reverse as well. So we really want to understand what works well for a social company versus a music company versus a gaming company, understanding those KPIs and how we can best sort of iterate and improve Bixby Home. So we're in the same boat yeah. on that one. <laughs> Michael, uh, I know you're a Warriors fan. Yes. Right? Okay. It's not fair. I'm a Wizards fan from DC. It's not looking good for us this year. Uh, <laughs> uh, that's right. Um, uh, they're having a tough year. <coughs> not you guys, but us. Uh, the, uh, and the reason I bring up sports is that, you know, we, see sp uh, we recently released sports um, as one of your cards. And it's, I think, across Bixby Home, it's one of the top performers uh, in, for engagement. Why, why do you think that is? Um. Well, I think with Yahoo Sports and just sports in general, it's, it's tapping into people's passion, right? Warriors or Redskins or whatever you may want to uh, look at. Um, and so I think that's, that's part of the engagement is really, you know, as people swipe into that, quick access to sports scores, so they want to see latest updates, so they want to see rival teams. And so I think this is why sports uh, often resonates with, with many of our users. 
Um, also, folks that know, you can actually watch uh, any NFL game live through Yahoo Sports, and so we have cards uh, that we promote that, and so nice we plug. click through and nice really plug. go straight into watching a live NFL game. Um, you know, as part of Verizon, we have access to some of those things, and so that uh, really drives engagement overall. And I think it's just you know, tapping the passions, and so that's why our cards do pretty well in, around the arena of sports. Yeah, I, I mean, just to, to follow up on what you're saying is that. Uh, we think that Bixby Home is really well when it's personalized, right? And so once you're sending a signal of what's my favorite song or my favorite game or my favorite sports team, that's when we st really start extracting a lot of the value out of Bixby Home. Uh, removing friction, right? So trying to drill down into a bunch of apps to hear that or to see what the score is uh, and pulling that straight up. Uh, and, and also, I think, so personalized, passion points, and then also high frequency of use, right? People play a lot of games, listen to a lot of songs. They, during games, we see that the interaction back and forth between Bixby Home is really, really high, right? And so that is, a, I think, a good example of something that we're achieving on that we want to continue to build around as well. Um, SDK, Chris, can yep. you give some tips, tricks? How did it go? I mean, we, we, we were lucky. Kind. Yeah, we, no, we, we were in the program early, right, which means we, we get direct access to engineers. So we had the first card up and running in like two days. And so it, was, it was quite surprising. You know, you hear Samsung, big company, and then, you know, it turned out it was a non-issue. And That's music to our engineering, <laughs> and engineering no, but it, it was very straightforward, right? And, and like we, to some extent at least, been giving the, the keys to the castle, right? Like we can, through the... Uh, the Server SDK, we can update what a user sees. We can make sure that the right, the right games are proposed to the right user, and we, we, we're super happy about that experience. And if, like, go sign up. It's not that hard. You still have to talk to somebody to get access, but, but from a technical perspective, it's, it's fairly straightforward. Fantastic. Um, and as we said earlier, if there are other technical questions or that we want to go a little deeper, Kevin and I are happy to discuss it after the fact. Um, just pulling up a little bit, maybe more sort of on this sort of product business context a little, Cherie, uh, is, you know, we have ambitions of our partnership with Spotify across lots of different devices, you know, into speakers and mobiles and TVs and beyond. Um, within that ecosystem, you know, how do you really think Bixby Home is best positioned to help with that overall partnership? Yeah, so, um we announced jointly this year this global long-term partnership, yeah. um, like you said, across uh, a lot of Samsung devices. Um, and those are going to be, like you said, TV, smart speaker, family hub. Um, and Bixby, po Bixby Home will serve as kind of a center point for users. And uh, some of the mobile uh, integrations will serve as a center point for these devices. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and it'll allow users to e easily jump into listening sessions or get recommendations on the fly. Okay. Yeah. So it's sort of in the vision mindset, yeah. uh, Michael. Uh, you know, as I think your, our companies are going to continue to work together really strategically across lots of different areas. Uh, and I'm sure that you are thinking about a vision of how to best utilize the assets with, with inside of, uh, within Oath and how that can work into uh, Bixby Home. Are there other capabilities or features that you guys are thinking about that you'd want to discuss that you think would work really well? Yeah, sure. Uh, a, a, I think there's a lot more content we have that, that I think makes sense, right? Especially with Huffington Post or TechCrunch or Engadget. So figuring out how we bubble those things up is, is one area. Um, the second piece is we have a lot of mail users. So what's actually potentially a really interesting use case is when we have Yahoo Mail or AOL mail users and we want to bubble up the content from their mailboxes. And so, which is, you know, it's time to check into your flight or here's your event or here's the order or a receipt, right? There's all these things that come into your inbox. Um, and so being able to kind of bubble those up to you, right? So as a reminder or, hey, it's time to do something, um, is something would be really neat for us to kind of work on. So yeah. I'd love to really kind of figure think, out how we explore that. Yeah, communication tools are one that we haven't gotten into yet. Uh, I just think there's, because there's a lot more complexity around right. it, right? Yes. And uh, we're certainly leaning into a lot of the content heavy spaces. And as we start moving more towards utility, right? When I talked about the new directions for Bixby Home, uh, being contextual based on patterns, I think communication and those communication tools fit really cleanly in there as, as well. So that's going to be exciting. Uh, uh, last question, Chris? Sure. Uh, experimentation, right? And um, 
what, how, what, what sort of experimentation have you all been doing respectively back and forth? And I think to give a broader sense of what your card really does, it's not only just uh, lightweight game playback and instant game playback, but there's also a monetization tied with it as well. Okay. Uh, and I know we've been experimenting because I think for us, we wouldn't want to suppose too much of our expertise on the gameplay because that's your core expertise, but we also have been exper experimenting around the monetization piece as well. Uh, if you could just talk a little bit about the back and forth experimentation, and this is one that we are certainly open to for all of our partners to be able to iterate on the platform as quickly as we can. I think that would be great just to... No, absolutely. Yeah, we touched upon it, upon it a little bit already. Like We have, have very good contact inside of Samsung to, to actually get things done. and and. For us, the most important thing and the thing we've been working with Samsung on is customization of the card, right? You know, uh, we would like more information about who the user is to be able to present the, the right set of games for the right user, right? It's very important that, that uh, you, you address the right user with the right experience, otherwise you're, you're sort of wasting that view or whatever it is. And, and it's something like we, we, we look very much forward to the next versions of Bixby, right? Yeah. You know, because that experimentation can uh, become quicker and better and, and like generally we, we, we like to have as much data and access as we possibly can to be able to, to sort of uh, drive the experience to the user and there's a whole bunch of experiences which we haven't brought to, to Bixby yet which is about social playing and these kind of things and we are, we are very fortunate that we work with Samsung on, on many different uh, uh, efforts that allows us to sort of tie them together, the good example being, uh, being both Bixby Home and uh, PWA, and there are other efforts that allows us to then go more social, right? So we've been super happy with that. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, yeah and we, we certainly are optimistic about a lot of the experimentation that we can do, yeah. looking towards new trending features, right, that you're just mentioning. Yeah. But also, at, at some point, being able to tie some of these things together. So how can a Spotify work with a company like yours? Right. Or how can a company like yours work with Oath? And hopefully being that common ground where some of those interactions and things can happen. Uh, you know, based on patterns. But uh, thank you for coming. We appreciate it. We hope that this is helpful um, to getting the different perspectives from all of you and your different leadership roles within your respective companies. Uh, we're excited about where Bixby Home is going, and we know we couldn't do it without the help of folks like you and the dedication to the platform. So we appreciate it. Thank you. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for your time.